Hello, everyone. It's Phil Jones for Projector Reviews, and I'm here with Jason Dustel from Meridia. And we're here to talk about tools to optimize your system. And Meridia is the leader when it comes to tools to get the most out of your AV equipment or even a commercial installation. Before we get started, we'd like to thank AV Pro Edge and Meridio for sponsoring this year's Spring Projection Showcase, where we get to talk about all the things you need to design a great projection system for a residential or commercial application. So, so Jason, how are you, man? I'm great, Phil. Thank you so much for having me. It's always, always good to hang out and talk shop with you. Um, yeah, and uh, you pretty much summed it up, man. We're we are a manufacturer of test equipment. Um, our background actually comes from Sencor, so if anybody remembers the, that name. Um, and they got out of this sort of realm several years ago. Mm-hmm. And um, our CEO, who was working for Sencor at the time, said, hey, we now have a vacuum of test equipment, so let's start our own company. Let's make test equipment. So we started off with the uh, Meridio 6G, which is kind of the gold standard for test pattern generators, for calibrators, mm-hmm. installers, and things like that. Um, and we were doing this whole 18 gig 4K HDR thing back in like 2013. Uh, mm-hmm. So we, we try to stay ahead of the game as much as we can. And, and um, that's sort of our, our mantras, uh, make tools for integrators that they need and that help their, um, just make their lives easier when they're in the field. Exactly. And and like I remember the 6G, um, mm-hmm. the way that the way that we met was at a um, I met this company was doing Cedia a few years ago. I was running around asking about um, long distance cabling solutions uh, yeah, and how to too. verify and test. Yep. And during that conversation, um, we were I was talking about how do you test a cable to make sure that the cable actually worked. And <laughs> yes. they introduced me to the 6A and 6G analyzers and the generators, which Woo-hoo. Jason has there. So uh-huh. Jason, can you talk about the analyzer and the generator? Right. So um, these two pieces are kind of designed to work together, but they can totally work as standalone pieces. So um, the dark gray guy here, this is a this is the Meridio 6G. This is a generator. This is how we get signal through a system, or this is how we get test patterns on the screen for calibration. On the other end of it, we've got the 6A analyzer, which tells me exactly what's coming in from that HDMI cable. So in, in a lot of cases where you've got a source that's sending out 4K, and that's going through a matrix switch and an AVR and then an extender and then into the TV, well, the TV's not getting 4K and HDR. And you're like, well, I wonder what's going on. So you take the HDMI cable out of the TV, pop it into here, and you can see timing resolution, frame rate, bit depth, chroma, color space, color gamut, uh, HDR metadata, yes or no, uh, the audio format that's coming through, how many channels of audio is coming through. So you can take a real quick look at the screen and know exactly what's going on. So you could say, okay, well, I'm starting off with 4K at the beginning of the signal chain, and I'm only getting 1080p at the end of the signal chain. So now we can start to figure out like who's the culprit here. It's not the source. Maybe it is the source. I plug in the analyzer straight from the source. It says 4K HDR. Okay, so it's not the source. We go to the next device. Coming out of that device, plug in the analyzer. Boom. Okay, we've got 4K HDR there. Awesome. Mm-hmm. We go to the next device. Maybe that's an extender. Plug the analyzer into the receiver end of the transmitter, and boom, 1080p 60 or 1080p 24. Mm-hmm. What's the culprit here? It's the extender. So now we can start to investigate why is this extender not passing 4K and HDR? Maybe it's an EDID setting, or maybe it can't do it. So now you've got to go back to the manufacturer, go back to the drawing board, and pick out a better extender or or maybe a newer extender for that particular job. Um, So it's really an end-to-end solution for doing troubleshooting and setup and things like that. But uh, one of the most common, common reasons to use this system is for the HDMI cable test as you we're telling that story before. So I've got an example here of a, a, an, a, uh, an AOC cable. So this is one of those hybrid copper fiber HDMI cables. And you know, they're fast and usually very trustworthy. And um, you, know, you take one out of the packaging and put it into the system, it just works no problem, right? But what happens if it doesn't? How do you know? So we're gonna take the generator, plug in the HDMI cable, and then I'm going to take the other end of the HDMI cable, We're gonna plug it into the analyzer. Now, when I go to the analyzer, I push a couple of buttons. Okay gets me into the menu. I scroll over a few different selections here, the different menus that we can go through. And eventually I'm gonna come across a cable test menu. Boom, right here. 
So right now it's set for 18 gigs, 4K60. So I press OK. We sit back and wait a moment, and we wait for the results of the cable test. Now something's already sending out, a, or, or something's already giving me a red flag, and that's the mm -hmm. five volt failed. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the cable is not sending power from one end to the other end. So something has happened to this cable. We have no signal, no signal, fail, fail, fail. So if I'm testing a system and I have it down to this HDMI cable, I test the HDMI cable, cable fails, no big deal. Grab another cable from the truck, throw that cable in, system's fixed. So yes, one one of the yeah. things that I actually teach people because I, I have a day job too, by the way, on top of projector reviews <laughs> and yes, um, that uh, that deals with AVRs and custom mm -hmm. integration as well. Sure. And we tell people all the time, check your cables before you put them in. It's yes. easier to have um, someone to check all your cables before you pull a cable through a wall and realize totally. that the cable is bad. And um, so we've been there, been there, done that. It stinks. It's terrible. Exactly, and yeah. uh, and the, and um and also the unit is also packed with all sorts of different test patterns and things mm -hmm. like that that you can use to fine tune your TV. So whether totally. it's looking at um, resolution, sharpness, contrast, color, and everything else. Mm -hmm. So not only can you use the generators and analyzers to test the quality of the signal to make sure it goes from point A to point B, mm -hmm. you can also utilize the generator to send signals to your television set to test that as well. And also, Jason, one another thing that I could tell you how you could use the um, the analyzer. Yeah. When the Apple TV came out, people oh were boy. complaining oh with boy. the Apple TV <laughs> that their systems were crashing. Oh, yeah. Um, and I was like, I wonder what's going on here. Based on the settings on the Apple TV, how much bandwidth was that sucker outputting <laughs> down the HDMI lines. And we were looking at it and it's supposed to be okay, maybe it's an old movie in HD that we know is only in HD and 24 frames per second, but right. the thing was outputting like 18 gigabits per second. Yeah. So from that we, we figured out and reading the, the display that the Apple TV was taking everything, including your HD 24P Three Stooges mm -hmm. and making it into 4K 60P HDR. So yeah. now that 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 upscaling or that up conversion make the picture look bad. It's like it also put a huge amount of bandwidth on the system, it and that's where we bandwidth, started. Sure. It murders the bandwidth. Yeah. So every, between um, different reviewers that all had the same analyzers, yeah. we all basically complained complain to the point where well, Apple added on the on the latest 4K Apple TV match frame rate and match format so if yep. you're not so the only thing that gets sent down the line in 4k 60p hdr is material that was shot in 4k 60p hdr totally. so 99 percent of what you're watching is not shot that way and it <laughs> yeah. reduced the amount of bandwidth required for your system and all of a sudden sure. those cables that were failing at 25 feet were now working now, yeah, if we and, didn't have that analyzer there, we would have never found that that yep. issue. The scary part was too, Phil, and I know you remember this, is that you know the Apple TV, the 4K Apple TV came out pretty early. It was one of the first sources that did 4K 60 and HDR. Mm -hmm. And at the time, you know, you got to remember this is like 2017 or so. So mm -hmm. you know, think of all the TVs back then. People had not upgraded; they still had 1080p TVs, but they went mm -hmm. out and bought the new Apple TV. They still had a 1080p AVR. They still had 1080p 10 gig cables. And as soon as you, I like that you use Three Stooges as your example. I always say Golden Girls. So <laughs> you fire up an episode of Golden Girls and it's really bright and contrasty and the skin tones look all whacked out. And you're like, what is going on here? And, and, and sure enough, you plug in the analyzer and it's coming out 4K60 Dolby Vision. And you're like, whoa, what is going on here? So you're right. We all complained about it and, and threw a hissy fit. And Gosh, I want to say it was only about a month or two maybe where uh, they mm -hmm. put out some firmware to let you do the uh, frame rate matching and the dynamic range matching. So if we hadn't found that problem as early as we did, you know, this could have dragged out for, I don't know, a year. And think of all the system failures in that much time of, you know, you run out and buy a $200 Apple TV because it's the new one and it's 4K, but the rest of the system is not ready for it. So we found the problem early. It got taken care of quickly, but it still trips people up to this day. I wouldn't have just wanted to show everybody real quick, Phil, just the... Uh, just the, the screen on the analyzer. So right now I've got the generator hooked up. Um, I've got it pumping out 4K60. So when I come over to the analyzer, this is how easy this is. You press OK, you've got a signal info page, and this is sort of what I was describing before. Frame rate, mm -hmm. resolution, 
color space, color gamut, whether HDCP is there or not, or what version is there, or maybe mm -hmm. there's no HDCP. Maybe it's a, a maybe you're in a professional, you know, uh, studio type situation. Uh, it tells you the total bandwidth. So right now I've got the generator set to 4K60, and look at that, 17.8 gigs. Mm -hmm. The ceiling is 18, so we're pumping mm -hmm. as much signal as we can through. Uh, we got 48K, 24-bit audio. All eight channels are lit up. It's LPCM. I mean, everything that you need to know is here. Yeah. So this pair is kind of almost like the foundation of the mm -hmm. of the company, um, yeah. the 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 six A and the six G. And totally. like I said, they can be used for analyzing signal coming out of a source. They can test a cable going to a display. Yeah. You could check cables between the displays. Yeah. And on top of that, because of the test patterns built in, also one of the number one tools for video calibrators mm -hmm. as the generator for those who calibrate displays, whether it's projectors yep. or television sets. Now, this is, this little kit is awesome, but but they mm -hmm. right, they retail for about five grand. So yeah. you guys also less, have, but, sure. but now you guys on top of that have another solution for mm -hmm. for testing that is um, a less expensive. Yes. Correct. So, so you know what we, what we, what we, how we pitch these to people is, you know, this is your, this is your like kind of cream of the crop. Um, anybody who's doing any integration work and doing calibration work, this is the pair that you want to go with. But as you said, um, people see the price tag and they, you know, the the hard thing is too, Phil, is that a lot of people can't, they don't justify it right away. But it's like, you know, when I go to a mechanic and he plugs in a little device and tells me exactly what's wrong with my car you know how much time did he just save by having those tools and you know over time with truck rolls and all the time that's spent during setup and troubleshooting and trying to track down these little problems if i can walk mm -hmm. in here and fix this problem in 15 minutes eventually i'm going to end up paying for this kit 10 times over so um then we go to uh, this kit this is called the fox and hound which is very very similar i mean you can do a lot of the same stuff uh, what's mm -hmm. different about the Fox and Hound kit is I'm not going to be able to use the generator for my calibration work. Uh, mm -hmm. So connecting to Calman or ColorSpace or HCFR, or any of those calibration software packages out there, I'm not going to be able to do that kind of stuff with the Fox and Hound. It does have some test patterns built into it, so you can maybe line up a projector and look at the color bars and you know do some pretty basic things like that. But the real advanced stuff. Uh, is going to come from the the 6G, or I'm sure we'll talk about it here pretty soon, the 7G, which is kind of our latest, greatest, newest, most powerful, biggest, uh, really sweet, sweet tool. The 6G and 6A, if you want to utilize it for a variety of different things, including mm -hmm. calibration, maybe you want to add your own uh, patterns to it and things like that. Totally. That is what that one is for. Yep. But for someone who, for many people who are just want to troubleshoot, Mm -hmm. Or they they do a lot of installs. They want to test stuff out, make sure everything's working properly. Sure. Like sure. for example, this camera that I'm using is mm -hmm. connected to a, a converter over here mm -hmm. to act as a webcam. Yep. It's a long HDMI cable, and sometimes mm -hmm. that cable is acts up. And being able to take the Fox and Hound and and find out really quickly if is is it a problem with the cable that I'm using, yeah. or is it a or, or is it a problem with the output of the camera or mm -hmm. an output of the streaming totally. box mm -hmm. really helps out. So yeah. so whether you're into troubleshooting, installation, and everything else, this is an important tool. I can't yeah. tell you how many times I've used this <laughs> not only for projector reviews yeah. to check how a projector is working mm -hmm. and the cable going to a projector, but also in my day job. Mm -hmm. And I have these in my bag all the time Absolutely. to make sure and test all the cables and the um, HD base T extenders and stuff mm -hmm. before the job is done. Yeah. Because I'd rather have it checked now yeah, and while the guys are there, instead of after when it and, doesn't work. You know, that's just—I mean, Phil—that's just barely scratching the surface of what these tools can do. Like, I could, if I'm really in a pickle and I'm in a distributed system where I've got four different brands of TVs, and um, you know, maybe two of the TVs are one brand, the third TV is another brand, the fourth TV is another brand, and I've got all my sources running through a matrix switch. It's going out through the system and through the home, perhaps. Um, and maybe the tube TVs that are the same brand are working just fine. The picture gets there, no dropouts, all looks good. TV number three is working fine, but that fourth TV that has, you know, maybe it's an off brand, maybe it's in the kitchen, so they didn't spring for anything super nice, which is totally fine. Um, so what I can do is I can take either the Fox and Hound or the 6A6G pair 
and I can read the EDID from one of the TVs that does work. So I can take the uh, the analyzer, for example, I can copy the EDID from the working TV. Now the analyzer, this little handheld portable device is that mm -hmm. TV. So mm -hmm. now I can go to the back of the rack and start plugging stuff in and start trying mm -hmm. to find out what the heck's going on. In a lot of those cases, mm -hmm. a lot of times it is an EDID problem, especially when you're dealing with mixed systems. I got mm -hmm. three 4K HDR TVs and I've got an old 720p TV in the garage. So we need to make mm -hmm. all of that work uh, reliably and 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 uh, and you know the last thing the integrator wants is the customer calling them you know uh, the morning of the super bowl and they're like hey man my tv in the garage keeps cutting in and out that is mm -hmm. an awful phone call to take so you're right man mm -hmm. uh, we tell integrators all the time you've got a big job coming up next week there's 65 hdmi cables i would have somebody in my warehouse or somebody in my office going through those mm -hmm. cables and just testing them testing them and testing them i've seen mm -hmm. it many times where somebody buries a 50 foot hdmi cable in the wall and it doesn't work mm -hmm. And we want the exactly. installers to be efficient and successful and to make as much money as they can, to be honest. And, <laughs> and you're only gonna be able to do that with having these types of tools. Exactly. Now we talked about first they had the the, the, the foundation was the 6G and the 6A. Totally. Yep. Then for those people who just needed um, more troubleshooting, but not all of the bells and whistles, that mm -hmm. um, they're not a calibrator. Right. That's where the Fox and Hound came in. Yep. But then you guys decided to build an even better um generator and that yeah. is the 7g right which is this big boy right here yeah and i absolutely yeah. love this thing yeah um so, i have been using it constantly for both jobs that for mm -hmm. whether it's using utilizing and um testing avrs or testing projectors mm -hmm. and things like that so can you talk a little bit so, about yeah the 7g the quick and dirty story of the 7g um the 6a and the 6g um, they have, I mean, you can do almost anything you want to with that kit, just with the front panel controls and just those buttons and just this screen and just those menus and no big deal. But if you're maybe an engineer or maybe you're, um, maybe you work for a house of worship and you need like a very specific resolution, um, or you need more detailed information about an EDID, maybe you're a manufacturer and you're looking at the hex code of the EDID, there is software that you can get for free on the Meridia website that will give you a little bit more information than what you can see just on the screens here. So that stuff is very popular. The, 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 what I call the super nerds, which you, know, you and I are part of that category. Um, mm -hmm. We really like seeing stuff like that, being able to do this kind of advanced signal monitoring test over time and things like that. So um, that stuff was really popular. And the, we really wanted something that the manufacturers and the engineers could use in more of a lab type environment with all the advanced stuff and, and things we just talked about. Um, but this kind of takes it to another level. Um, the 7G, it's got like a thousand test patterns in it, uh, tons and tons of empty hard drive space. So you can upload 4K HDR video clips, which is what I've done with mine. Um, we have some 1080p, 120 frames per second videos on there. Um, and you know, right now with all the stuff we're talking about, this is still an HDMI 2.0 device. Um, but the whole idea of it was the people who bought one of these early, um, you know, we do have an HDMI 2.1 hardware upgrade coming very soon. So the whole idea is you have a 7G, maybe you work for a giant AVR manufacturer, or maybe you work for a small TV manufacturer in France, doesn't matter. So you're gonna send that machine back to us, we're gonna outfit it with the HDMI 2.1 hardware and we're gonna ship it back to you. So mm -hmm. eventually this is gonna be able to do full HDMI 2.1 with auto low latency modes and all those really cool things. Right now though, as it stands, it already can test for ARC and eARC, which if you're a manufacturer, you really need to make sure your eARC stuff works. Uh, you can do some latency tests with it too. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. got a, um, it comes with a couple of little sensors. Now, now actually, as he does, as he digs for that, I do want to point something out. The first pieces we were talking about were just for testing um, a lot on um, video from point right. A to point B. Right, that right. was his yep. main focus. But yep. but he just mentioned a couple other things. eARC. eARC is more of an audio-based thing. So mm -hmm. not only is this now your generator and tester for your audio application, mm -hmm. I mean, for your video applications, now this becomes a tool for your audio applications. Mm -hmm. Remember HDMI, is it seems it seems simple, it's one cord, but there's a whole lot of things going on in an HDMI going on. cable. Yeah. And being able yeah. to test its, um, its uh, sound and its video capabilities utilizing one tool is a great thing. And me yeah. as a calibrator, um, the other thing that he had mentioned that I 
is the fact that you can put your own patterns in. Yeah. Before I would use this device, I'd plug it into my computer and, mm -hmm. and you would use a your 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 analog your generator as your test pattern tool yeah. to to uh to calibrate the projector. But then mm -hmm. I would still have to go get a Blu-ray player yeah. or something <laughs> to play back video yeah. to make sure yeah. the pictures look good. So no, now there's 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 guys out there who carry around a blu-ray player and they carry around like um uh the uh the will smith movie that's 60 frames per second why am i drawing oh, yeah. a blank um uh, they carry you're talking a... about omega gemini man gemini man you yeah thank bring, you yeah you have to bring along gemini man or, yeah, a player. or um Nobody billy lynn just to check it right yeah, but with this sure. guy i literally have this i do all of my calibration with this yeah um it works seamlessly with my cow man and everything mm -hmm. else and soon as i get done I have the test patterns built in, in there, so right. I can actually, I mean, actual video content. Yeah. So I can go in and, and that video content I'm completely familiar with. So mm -hmm. now I can go through and after I do my calibration, I can check it with video. Yeah. Um, I can check motion. I can check, I can check banding. I can check um, if there's any highlight clipping, all of that stuff from this device. Now, yeah. now, Jason, what are those things you just have in your hand, by the way? So you mentioned latency, and you know, one of the big things that plagues integrators and even manufacturers all the time is, um, you know, you get that call from the customer, and the customer says, "Hey, man, I'm watching, you know, whatever, and I'm watching the news. This is common, and the lips don't match up with the voice. There's a delay. Mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, well, how the heck are we gonna figure this out? So, um, the 7G comes with a couple of uh, probes. Uh, this mm -hmm. is just a pretty simple photodiode that mm -hmm. uh, you can, it's got a little suction cup and if my camera would focus, you could see it better. But you would <laughs> stick this, you would suction cup this to the middle of your TV. Uh -huh. Then you would take the microphone and you would put that like right up on the speaker, real close to the speaker. And mm -hmm. I can do a lip sync or I can do a latency test with the 7G. Mm -hmm. So I run this test, there's a flash on the screen, the probe picks up the video latency, there's a, a beeping sound, the microphone picks up that, and the 7G will tell us the latency between the audio and video. So mm -hmm. if it's 30 milliseconds, now I can go back to my AVR or something in the system that has mm -hmm. an audio latency setting, and I can back it up 60 milliseconds, all of a sudden the lips match up to the voice again. Yeah. And now, now, that is such a hard problem to, to figure out without the tool. Yeah, the other thing too that, that caught my attention is at projector reviews, we do we try to do uh, light latency. We're going to start doing more game lag testing. And if you, you look at now. most projectors, um, the the common piece that everybody uses is called a Leo Bonar lag mm -hmm. tester. Mm -hmm. And but that lag tester works great, but it was designed for HD. Yeah. You know there is a new version that will do 4K, but it can't mm -hmm. do all of the different resolutions, and right. you don't have the ability to change all the different resolutions. So yeah. I was talking to Jason, and he mentioned, oh. You know, you can do that with this. So yeah. you can do everything. You can test 4K 60, 4K 120. Well, you can test and, also all the different resolutions and all the different frame rates utilizing this. And Because right now, everybody does these crazy, I plug the Leo Bonar into, yeah. into, uh, into this, it upscales it, yeah. and, and they do all this trickery. And he was like, why don't you just use you should, this? You use that, yeah. He's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, really? Um, so, so it, you'll notice that on projected reviews, we're actually going to have more um, uh, testing of all the different latency, yeah. or, um, for the different resolutions. Why? Because I have a 7G. And and don't forget too, Phil, that um, the 7G is a Dolby certified machine, and we, we now have some DTS stuff on there as well. So if you wanted to test. LPCM or you wanted to test Atmos or you wanted to test regular 5.1 or you want to test DTSX or you want to test DTSH, whatever you want to do, you can do it. We, I've been telling you, we shoved this thing full of stuff. The other thing that's cool too, if you want to super geek out, um, there's a couple of other pieces of software that you can get for free on the Meridia website. One of the pieces of software, I'm still not sure why we give it away for free because it's very, very powerful. Not something that an integrator would normally use, but if you're a manufacturer, you're trying to develop products that work their best, the lowest amount of latency, and all those types of things. So what you can do with that machine is you can hook up to a computer, USB is the most common, and you can run some test for five seconds, 10 seconds, a minute, whatever you want. And then you can start changing formats, you can start changing resolutions, you can even unplug the HDMI cable, plug it back in, and you can monitor over time all of the HDMI traffic. So you can mm -hmm. see down to the microsecond when the five volt connects, when the HTCP handshakes, like all that good stuff. So 
if you're an engineer, like you need to know this type of stuff or you're just blindly building things and, and writing code for HDMI. And, you know, that's that's not that's not good. So, you know, for, for this machine being the price that it is and that the software I'm talking about is called the protocol analyzer software. Mm -hmm. I've seen other companies make a protocol analyzer software and sometimes it's like thirty thousand dollars. So the fact that we mm -hmm. um, give it away when you buy the 7G is pretty awesome. It is the ultimate generator. Mm -hmm. um, it is it is the most packed tool. Yeah. Now, is it overkill for some people? Possibly, Could but um, but for me, yeah. the fact that I can use it for both my job dealing with receivers and sound bars, right. and I right. can use it for my job dealing with projectors and displays, yeah. um, it, it's a godsend. Yep. And um, so I can do all of that. Plus, I can use it for calibration. Yeah. Plus, I can use it for picture quality, picture quality what? evaluation. What? Guess what? There may or what? may not be a matching analyzer to that pretty soon. Ooh, I would love a to see that. 7A. A 7A to go with my 7G. Yeah. That I would uh, another match made in <laughs> a match made in heaven. Yeah. A lot of these tools, like the 6A and the 6G, mm -hmm. is to make sure that the signal gets from point A That's the whole to point. point B. A lot of times people think about HDMI, HDMI, HDMI. Mm -hmm. But for longer distances, a lot of people are not sending the video signal all the way. Mm -mm. via HDMI. They're Correct. converting it to HD base T. Yes. So you guys have now a new piece uh -huh. dedicated for the testing of HD base T, correct? Absolutely. Um, this has been a problem that our industry has seen for many years. And HD base T has been around a long time. Um, and here's the thing with HD base T. You take a standard uh, category cable, and with HD base T, you really want to be 6A, but yeah, if you have to do you know 5E or something, it can usually work okay for things like you know 1080p. But um, the problem that we've had is we've never been able to test test the category cable reliably. There are continuity testers out there. That's the machine powering up. The continuity testers tell you are electrons getting from point A to point B. Yes, mm -hmm. great, but it doesn't tell you anything anything more advanced than that in, in most cases. So there was really a need for a machine that could test the HD base T line itself. So we can test the HD base T line to not only make sure that signal is getting through from point A to point B, but we can also test this cable for what we call DC resistance. So think about the things that happen. And I know Phil, you've, you've seen these systems before. It's a huge system. Uh, the house has a gym and a huge kitchen and a giant HVAC system. And for some reason, the den tv flickers off and, and on the picture flickers flickers off and on every time somebody fires up the the big refrigerator the 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 big treadmill in the gym or something like that so we can not only test the cable for um for data pass but we can also test it for dc resistance as well so if i do have any problems with an exercise machine or a, maybe maybe the category cables up in the ceiling and it's running right next to a piece of Romex, which is not good. Uh, there's lots of crosstalk problems. There's lots of lots of issues if you coil a cable up too much. The biggest thing that we see all the time is the termination. Um, we see very, very common that um, the one thing that we always tell people to avoid and HD base T will tell you the same thing. Don't cheap out and use the easy ends, not for video. Fine for IT stuff, no problem, but not for video. It's too high frequency. So, and as you said before, and I, I love that you said this, guys, do this stuff beforehand. You don't want to be on site and find these little, I like to call them surprises. Not fun. Okay. Okay. So, so the recap, what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So, Meridio makes um, tools to help make sure that you will optimize yes. your system and it functions properly. Mm -hmm. So, the first thing, you can use it to make sure the signal gets from point A. Correct. Point B. So mm -hmm. the 6G and mm -hmm. 6A allows you to test HDMI yep. as well as do picture quality and calibration. Um, for those who just need to test the signal path, they have the fox and the hound. For those who want to go deeper and test not only video, mm -hmm. um, you and want to test audio and latency and things like that, they have the king of generators mm -hmm. called yeah. the 7G. Yeah, it's a beast. And and lastly. For those who are looking to test that how that signal gets from point A to point B, mm -hmm. utilizing another popular way of transmitting video, which is HD base T, they just announced 
their HD base T um, mm -hmm. testing solution. So as you can see, you can utilize their tools to to ensure that you get proper performance and all of the performance you paid yeah. for. So Jason, um, thank you very much for coming and talking sure. about um, uh, giving us a brief understanding of the Absolutely. tools that Mario it, offers. Like I said, man, we're scratching the surface. I know we don't we don't have a ton of time here, but um, check our YouTube page. We've got tons of stuff on there. Step by step troubleshooting. There's even some training modules on our uh, um, on our website. So if you're an integrator and you're interested in these tools, you get a full tutorial, what every button does, what every screen means. Um, again, just I say this all the time, but you walk in, you plug a thing in, you push a couple buttons and you go, this is what's wrong. It's 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 invaluable. OK, yeah, that is awesome. So we will so definitely make sure yeah. you register. Cool. So, so Jason, um, thank you very much for coming and talking Always. about Meridio. Anytime, and Phil. we shall talk to you in uh, hopefully the fall. Bye bye. Rock and roll, man. Nice to see you.